Today's video is a long and involved process of hacking several different patterns and ideas together into this dress that I wore to my cousin's wedding. I hope you guys have a cup of tea and a biggie because this is gonna be a long story and I'm about to talk you through the entire process. To start from the start, I bought this fabric more than a year ago from the Remnant Warehouse and it was actually, I wanted to make a new version of one of my favorite skirts, which was kind of falling apart but I never got around to it because obviously other projects got in the way. And then in the meantime, I changed my mind about what I wanted to use the fabric for. I had this idea for the bodice and like bust area that had been in my head for a long time. And I'd sketched it out a couple of times and I decided that it would be worthwhile to make a toile. A toile is basically a draft garment that you make in some other sort of fabric that you're not really too worried about just to kind of test out ideas and test out the fit before you make the garment out of the actual fabric you want to use. If you know my videos, then you won't be surprised to know that I have never really done a toile before because I like to just dive straight into a project. I know I also didn't pre-wash this fabric because, uh, you know, it was cotton and I didn't, I didn't really think I would have to. I went to my parents' place to sew with my mum for the day. We were both working on things to wear to the same wedding, so it was kind of fun to just like work with her and share, share ideas and kind of advise each other on the decisions we were making about the dresses we were making. I took along this old bedsheet that had a hole in it that we were just gonna throw away, but I decided, hey, I'm gonna hold on to that because that could be useful for making a toile, and it was. I think that also having that leftover sheet made me kind of less hesitant about making a toile. Like, usually I wouldn't wanna waste any fabric, but because this sheet was gonna go in the bin anyway, I was like, well, I'm just gonna like use it and see how it turns out. Using the bedsheet to make the toile was honestly kind of liberating. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and so I feel like because I knew that I wasn't gonna be wearing this bedsheet thing anywhere, that it really gave me freedom just to experiment, and I really enjoyed that process. But the idea for the dress was to make a rouged bust piece and then have like a bodice and some straps and just like some sort of skirt. I took a basic shape from a pattern that my mum had just to get started. And then for the rouge part, I knew that I needed like more fabric than the width of that piece to rouge down to then make it into that piece that I had in my mind. So what I did to elongate that piece, I took the piece that I copied and I folded it into this sort of concertina pattern. Probably they were about like an inch segments and then I marked all of those inches out on that pattern that I'd copied. Then I took a fresh piece of trace paper, which was just like baking paper. So, and then I, I traced out each of those segments twice so that I would have double the width of the original piece. Then I kind of traced around everything and joined up those lines. I probably didn't need to do this, but I thought it was going to be like an effective method to make a nice convenient pattern piece that I could use in the future, but it ended up just like, yeah, it, it was a fun experiment to do. Next, I gathered the edges of the piece to be rouged as you would normally with anything you need to gather. I marked the center line and I attached it to the regular bust bodice piece, distributing the gathers evenly along that part. And for this phase, I was really, really, really happy with how this turned out. It was looking exactly how I pictured it in my head. It was at that point that I decided that I knew I needed to use Gracie Steele's Frolic Frock pattern for the real garment because the shape of that bust piece is just so well done. It is absolutely beautiful. It has a nice little curve that takes it back up to the kind of upper edge, which gives that, gives that ruched piece a nice finishing point rather than tucking it all the way into the side seam, which is like a little bit clunky. When I did the, the top bit, I mucked around making a bit of a skirt and I wasn't really happy with it, but I knew that I, I basically I had to go home and get on with other things. So that I, I had to come back and, and revisit this a little bit later on. Okay, now we're gonna move on to cutting out and sewing with the real fabric, which is this fabric called Box Dozen from the Remnant Warehouse. Um, as I said, I bought, I think it was three meters of this like a, more than a year ago. So I got my pattern pieces from the Frolic Frock that I was using, which were all the pieces of the bodice, but not the skirt. So I, I bought the pattern and I only printed off the things that I needed, which was kind of handy. So the, the Frolic Frock dress the upper portion is fully lined. So 
I went ahead and I prepared the lining for the front part and then it was on to like the actual outer piece. I thought about doing what I did for my toile which was to make that elongated pattern piece but basically I knew I needed about double the width to then root it down and have enough gathers so that it was going to look the way I want it to look. So I just laid out the normal bust piece on the fold and then I measured it out to be double the width and I added a curve on the outside just like the regular piece just sort of elongating that out and just doing it freehand rather than spending time making another piece. Then I added two rows of stitching, long stitching along the top and the bottom as you would do with gathering anything and I gathered it all down and then I thought I was just going to use the ruche piece as the main outer thing and then just attach it to the lining as per the instructions but I wanted that ruche piece to have just a little bit more structure so what I did is I actually cut out a third bust piece, just a regular shape, so that I could kind of applique the ruched piece onto that and have the ruching sitting exactly where I wanted it to sit before I was gonna attach the front to the lining. So just to summarize, the bodice has a lining part and the regular front pieces, and then on top of that, there's a third ruched piece, which is on the outside. So there's basically three layers of fabric at the bust. Thankfully, I remembered that I really liked the sweetheart neckline on the twirl that I made, so I sneakily just like cut off a little bit of extra fabric just to bring that line into the frolic front piece because the frolic front just has a straight across neckline. Then I followed the instructions as though I was just making the regular bodice, this time with the extra rouge piece on the top. Now while I was doing all of this I had the genius idea of adding some cups, some soft cups into that bust piece as well. To fill out a little bit of that rouging because I don't have a lot going on up top. I knew that I wasn't going to be wearing a bra with this so I wanted to make sure that it was going to sit with the shape and with the appropriately filled out for this kind of garment. So all I did was on the, on the lining I tacked on some soft cups that I had lying around left over from some active wear. Then I just followed the instructions through to the point of attaching the straps. Then yeah I had to take another break and we picked this project back up at the farm when I went up there by myself for the weekend. How are you going? You need a fresh tea? I said this would be a song and I wouldn't lie to you. If you need to go get a fresh tea, happy if you just pause, go get yourself a snack. I got my coffee here, it's going cold because this is taking a long time to record. Okay, so as I said, next up is a trip to the farm to frantically finish everything off. This was the weekend before the wedding. I thought I was gonna get everything done and spoiler alert, I did not get everything done. This was my first time ever making adjustable straps and I was pretty proud of myself for how it turned out. I made a slight adjustment to how I connected the slider piece compared with the uh, instructions and the video that Gracie links in the pattern. I don't know if this is gonna make lots of sense, but I'm gonna try my best to explain what I did. In the instructions it says to thread thread, thread the strap through the adjustable slider, back down through the, through the ring, back up and then loop it underneath and then stitch it there. What I did was I threaded it through the slider, through the ring, back up, and then rather than going over the piece and connecting it under, I went under the slider and back through so that then the tail would be wedged between the two bits of strap. One of the things that I love about the frolic frock pattern is the shape of the back bodice pieces and how they connect to the straps. The way that Gracie did that curve up into the strap is just beautiful and I feel like this pattern can be worn in a casual way or in a formal way because the details are so fine that it really elevates the piece and it makes it feel really elegant. Okay, we have made it to the skirt. Well done, you. Remember to subscribe if you're still watching. Also like the video, thank you very much. We are onto the home stretch now. This process is gonna be a lot quicker for you than it was for me, let me tell you. Then when I was at the farm, I basically had, I only had a certain amount of fabric left over and I had to figure out how I was gonna get the skirt to function basically. I decided that the fabric was too fun to be tied up in a garment that I could only wear to like more formal events. And I also saw on the age Instagram stories, there was this dress and skirt that was styled over the top of each other, which ended up looking really cool. And I was like, hmm, that gave me an idea that what if I made a mini dress out of the fabric and then an underskirt so that 
It gives it some versatility to be worn in a cute kind of casual way or in a more formal way and then if I want to wear the long skirt separately I can. So that's what I decided to do. That's the route that I that I went down. I decided that I wanted this to have kind of like a bit of a tulip shape and be like almost a an extended sort of peplum for the short dress. I took a pattern piece that I had with me which was kind of just like a classic pencil shape and I basically just freehanded the side seam out a little bit and I made it out of the bed sheet and I was like yeah okay I'm happy with that. I figured that the floral fabric was going to have a bit more structure than the bed sheet because it's a bit of a stiffer cotton. I cut that wider thing kind of freehand and stitched it together. What happened was that the darts on that skirt lined up perfectly with the bodice pieces, the back bodice seams. Like, it was just amazing. Like, honestly, that was a sheer fluke and it turned out really well. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna pursue this. And it all came together pretty well, except the lower skirt probably didn't have enough sh enough shape, enough of that like bubble structure. So I decided that I would add some horse hair in the hem when I finished off the hem. On to the long skirt, we are basically the last step here. I did some calculations and I realized I didn't have quite enough fabric to get the effect that I wanted because I'd seen this other skirt on Pinterest that I've been thinking about how to recreate and basically it's a drop waisted skirt with a, like a fixed piece at the kind of the waist down to the hip and then from the hip down it's just a gathered rectangle but I didn't have enough fabric or length in what I had left over to make that happen, which was a shame. I made a little sketch of how I wanted this thing to look, which was based on a, that skirt that I had seen on Pinterest. I used the same skirt pattern pieces that I had and made that sort of upper part of the skirt and it, it was fitting really well. So then I was like, all right, time to move on to the lower part. And then, then stress took over, anxiety took over and mistakes, mistakes, started happening. This is kind of where things were doomed. I got really stressed, you guys. I got really stressed. I needed to pack up, I needed to go home, I needed to finish this garment, I only had a week to finish it. I was like freaking the fuck out. I should have packed up, left, thought about it, let my brain figure it out a little bit, and then, and then, and then finish it off. Because I was not in a mental state to finish off this skirt the way that the, the, the way that I wanted to. I fucked it. I fucked it is what I'm trying to say. I fucked it. I kept testing out if I had enough fabric to make the skirt the way that I wanted to make it and <sighs> I even checked the shop. I checked online and it said that the fabric was out of stock. And then <sighs> I'm shitty because apparently they do have some stock that they put up after I finished making this. And yes, I bought it. I, I was annoyed for a, a little bit and then I decided I'm gonna buy that and I'm gonna fix this fucking skirt the way that I wanted it to be. I was concerned that I didn't have enough fabric to get a nice, juicy, rich gather on that lower portion and have enough length. So what I decided to do was I took the A-line pieces, the A-line pattern pieces from that same pattern. I cut out the lower parts using that pattern piece I basted everything together and I checked in the mirror and I tried to convince myself that it looked okay. But it did not look okay. I drove home and I realized like, this is not working. I need to find a different way to do this. This is just terrible. It was not okay. I needed to find a solution. I had cut the fabric. There was no going back to the floral fabric. I had to find another way to finish my vision. I ended up doing a couple of days later is I got my trusty long pink skirt, my one of my favorite skirts I've ever owned, and I decided to harvest some fabric from it. I also needed a zipper and I didn't have time to visit any kind of shop. I didn't have any appropriate zippers in my stash, so I decided to harvest the zipper from my pink skirt as well and use that as the closure for the new skirt I was making. I love this pink skirt, but it was falling apart and I had to I needed a zipper and the zipper was the was just like, it was ripe for the taking. And I needed more fabric. So I went ahead and I cut, I cut it all up. I cut out the pockets. I cut the length. I cut the waistband off. I, I, I took what I needed and I gathered it all up and I stuck it to the upper part and I called it a knife. And look, I was happy at that point, but thinking about about it now, I'm actually like kind of upset about ripping apart one of my favorite skirts because I love that skirt a lot and 
I really wanted to use it uh, as a basis for a pattern to make a fresh one, but now it's gone and I have to just accept that. I don't know if anyone else here feels me on this, but I get attached to inanimate objects, including clothing, and yeah, I'm kind of, I'm mourning that, I'm mourning that skirt. And I'm annoyed at myself because I could have just worn the skirt as it was underneath the short dress and it would have looked exactly the same and I could have kept my skirt and finished off everything else later. Also, knowing what I know now about how the fabric shop rediscovered a secret little bit of extra fabric somewhere in their stash. Yeah, I could have just, could have just left it until I got more fabric to finish that off, which I'm now gonna do. I bought that. Not, I'm not gonna let anyone else get their hands on that fabric. It's mine. I put the order in. It's in the post. Um, okay, now that I've processed a bit of that, I'll just tell you I threw a little waistband on, I put a button in, I finished off the horse head in the hem of the short dress. I actually finished off the hand sewing parts, putting on the button and putting on the hook and eye. Like literally, I think it was the day of the wedding or the night before. Let's go to the final look now and here it is. This is my little rouged bust, tiny little dress with a cute little hem and the skirt. I really loved how this outfit came together and I was very, very, very happy that it went together so well with my bright green raincoat. I got a lot of comments, I got a lot of compliments on this outfit and it really, really felt like me and I'm very happy that I made it the way that I did. As I said, I bought that extra bit of fabric, that 1.4 meters, so I'm gonna change the bottom half of the floral skirt into the thing that I wanted it to be and then I'm gonna have to find another way to honor my pink skirt in some other kind of garment. So stay tuned for that. I really like the way this turned out. I have been growing in confidence in pattern hacking and self-drafting and I really feel like this is a really true representation of what I wanted it to be and I'm really pleased that I'm spending the time to transform the ideas that I have in my head into real life because it's so rewarding and I'm like really surprised by how it's going to be honest. I would love to know what you think about this project and how it turned out and I really 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 want to hear from you guys if there's other things you want me to have a go at making and I can try and show you the process, the steps, how to go about it, That's, that's those are all the same things. If you made it through the video, well done to you, you deserve a clap. And you also deserve a nap because this was this was a saga. This was an absolute saga. If you want to see more sewing videos, write me a comment. If you want to see more styling videos, write me a comment. If you want to see more vlogs, write me a comment. If you want to see, what do you want to see, guys? What do you want to see? I I'm having the best time making these videos, even though it's stressful. But let me know what you want to see. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you would change. Let me know what you would do differently. I am open to any and all suggestions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I love you guys, bye!